Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography over to the next level. Now this week, we wanted to kind of just make sure that you guys know that this is a viewer request show. We'd be more than happy to take your comments. We can do it on any social media pages. If you want to do it on mine, make sure that you go to facebook.com slash aboutrc. You can leave us a comment there. This week, our taking our comments are from Ernie Stone. Now, Ernie Stone says, there are tons of product reviews in photography, tripods, right? But surprisingly, little on actually using them, especially for outdoor photography. Well, Ernie, I brought a couple of my friends here with me. Now, uh, when you're picking tripods, right, the things that you need to kind of keep in mind, obviously you want to keep in mind weight, you want to keep in mind durability, you want to keep in mind ruggedness, you don't want them to break. There's going to be a ton of different choices that are out there. You got Mifoto, you got Faisal, you got Gitso, you got Manfrotto, you got all of that kind of stuff. I've made a specific choice to do this. So, so I've bought two tripods for me. The first one that I have is a smaller one, right? And both of these come from a company called Really Right Stuff. They are not cheap tripods, right? So they are substantial when you work with them. But one of my favorite parts about this is the fact that these things are tough. I beat these things into the ground. This is the TQC 14 tripod with a BH30 ball head. Now, I can't really show you this here unless we kind of zoom into it, but this right here has been beat. I've taken this thing on salt water. It's been in pools. I've thrown it underwater. I've shaken it out. It's been in snow. It's been in sand. And so far, I haven't had to send it in once. So that part I think is pretty cool. It's carbon fiber based. And the reason that I bought this one was because this one head to foot fits exactly inside of a roller bag. So the first thing that you want to consider when you're doing something with any type of tripod is, are you going to carry it with you? That's it, right? So if it's going to be heavy and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna stick it in the suitcase or I'm gonna put it inside of my trunk and I'll be there sometime, you're never gonna use it. You wanna make sure that you're using a tripod that's gonna be light enough for you to carry so that you carry it. My biggest problem was with all of my travel that I'm doing, a lot of the times I just have a roller board and then I had to take the head off and I had to do this and I had to take the legs and fold them and it was annoying. So when I found one that was really, really durable like this one and it fit head to toe like this in the roller board, I was like, getting it, got it. This has a BH30 head on it. So that brings me to the concept of the head. So we talked about lightweight, durable, we know that that's what we want. This head has seen some work. Like look, if you look right here inside of the indentations and all that kind of stuff, it's been chipped, it's been dragged. Uh, I left it actually on a car and I got dragged it. It's a mess. But anyway, it works still. Everything's perfect. Now, from here, what I want to do is uh, talk to you about the head. So we talked about durability and lightness. That's one thing. The head has to be something that's rated for a specific amount of poundage. Take a look at the individual sites and make sure that the head rates for whatever gear you're going to put on it. So this one, I tend to cheat, right? So it's a lot of do as I say, not as I do. Uh, this, I can use a 24 to 70, 16 to 35, that looks really good, 70 to 200 on cameras, right? Canon, Nikon, they do fine. And it locks down pretty good. I wanna be able to grab this and lock this down and not have it move. Once you get into something like a 200 F2, then it's a little too heavy for it. And you'll notice that sometimes in some tripods, I think I could still get away with it with this one if I really tighten it down. But surprisingly, what'll happen on some tripods is they'll start to creep and they'll start to move and they'll start to wobble. So you want to pick something that's going to be rated for the weight that you want to carry. That's important. So head's important. This is a really good head. Body's important. This is a really good body. Find one for you. Now, this, while I love it and it's great and I've used it for a variety of situations, there are times when all of a sudden things like wind can become an issue. So when you need a bigger tripod, right, big glass, something like that, or if you're shooting in a scenario where the slightest amount of elements are going to get in the way, you're going to want to move into a bigger tripod, right? This is the one that I carry for bigger jobs. This is also a really right stuff tripod, right? So this happens to be their bigger line. This is the TVC 33 tripod, and it has the venerable BH55 head. I don't know that many photographers out there that are not using this head. This is kind of like the gold standard when it comes to photography heads. So it happens to be really good, very smartly designed, right? So you have this that kind of moves around very, very quickly. And I like these quick release clamps. I want to be able to get my camera in and out as fast as possible. 
So that part, I think, is very, very important. Getting in and in, getting it out. Now, as soon as you turn this, you can also adjust the amount of friction that you have in the head, as well as rotation. So those things are also very important. When you're doing panoramics, you wanna be able to do this, move from left to right. You wanna be able to have some friction so that you can kinda of move this around with a little bit of resistance and kinda of get it to where you want it. Sometimes I'll try to do a shot and I wanna move from one side to another side. I don't wanna unlock it, have it be all wiggly, lock it again. I wanna open it up just a tiny bit and have just enough resistance to kinda of force it into the shot that I want and then once I do that, I'm good. So the heads are very important for that. Once we do that, right, so we've talked about that, now let's talk about some general usage. By and large, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this down, and I'll use this other tripod here, my smaller one, as a reference for this. But by and large, what you want to do is whenever you're working on any tripod, don't use the bottom foot first, right? This, the smallest one, is the flimsiest leg of the bunch, right? So if you're gonna work your way up, right, Work your way up from here, right? Use the biggest one, the one that's closest to you, move that one out. Once you get high enough, then move to the next one. Once you've done that, and if you don't find that you have the height that you want from there, then from there, use the just-in-case one. So work from the top, move your way down to the bottom. Now, the second thing is, a lot of the times, what I'll do is I'll use this, I'll go to my first one, I'll go to my second one, and if I'm a little too high, rather than collapsing them in, if I, have this, if I have the space, I'm gonna splay the tripod, right? By splaying it, what you're doing is you're opening up the legs a little bit wider and having a wider base on whatever it is that you're doing is going to make the tripod a little bit more stable. So rather than collapsing it and having it on the narrow portion of it, you want to be able to splay it out a little bit further. This entire column can come out if I need it to and make it even flatter still. So if you have the space, splay. Move out so that you can stabilize some more rather than bringing your column up or down or extending your legs. We've talked about these, we've talked about splaying. The last thing that I would tell you from a tip is when you're using a tripod and if your lens is going in this direction, whatever you do, make sure that the leg that you're using for that is in the direction directly under where the tripod leg is. The glass has to be under the tripod leg. If you set yourself up where the legs are like this and your legs are spread and you have your lens right here, all of the weight is in this one area and what'll happen is, oh no, crash. So by turning this and making sure that the lens is pointed in this direction, you now can grab this and you have something that's supporting it in this one section. So it moves forward, nothing is gonna happen from there. So chucking that leg forward or tip the chuck is something that's very, very important. So those are a couple of different things. If you wanna take a look at the Really Right Stuff tripods, go to the Really Right Stuff tripod website. They have a lot of different options for you. You can find that at reallyrightstuff.com. Now guys, when we come back, we've got a couple of more viewer suggested tips and tricks right here in Photography Tips and Tricks. We'll be right back. You'll never have fewer digital images than you have today. By tomorrow, you'll have more. This is the first time in my life where I've had this instantaneous access to all my images all the time. With MyLeo, you look over at your iPad and it's there, and you pop up your iPhone and it's there. It's like, cool. You're talking about protecting and monitoring the visual history of our lives. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. This is what a ton of people are waiting for. This is what we need. Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks. Let's get and continue to answer some viewer mail here. So the first thing that we got here is, let's go ahead and just grab Neil J. Wood, or G Neil J. Sorry, Neil J. <laughs> Would like to know the best way to get sunburst flares without filters. Neil, the best way for you to do this is actually to just set your camera up to the lowest possible 
aperture that you have, or the highest possible number. Neil, let me explain to you what I'm talking about here with a picture. So here's a shot that I did with an appropriately timed sunburst, and to be honest with you, this was complete luck. I just happened to be there, right time. There were a bunch of us trying to get this one shot, and it fell right into the exact same spot. Now, I shot this at around f22. That's the only deal. Set your camera so that the aperture is setting to f16, f22. You want a really small hole so that you can produce that sunburst. Now, a lot of the times people think that the sunburst thing is uh, a filter or an effect or something that you can put on top, but you're actually, what you're doing here is you're using your camera, the actual aperture as a filter, right? When you shoot at a really wide aperture, so think of it, let's say this, if this was something like, let's say F2.8, right? The hole would be really big, so you would have a star that has a really big hole and really, really short spikes. Not very good, right? And it would look more like a mess because a lot of light would be coming out of this hole and you would never see these lines that are here. But as you close the aperture down and you close it down and make it smaller, now all of that light is being concentrated through one spot and the starbursts that you're seeing are really the light that's emitting out of the blades or out of the small angles on the blades. It bounces and it skips off of that so the starburst is actually this part right here. And you're only going to see that when you bring yourself down further and further and further. The smaller the hole, the better it is for you. So something for you to consider. Now, once we've knocked that out, let's go and get another Facebook question. The other one that we have here is Scott Jeffcoat. Headed to Oregon at the end of the month. Any tips for waterfall shots? The number one tip for waterfall shots. Get yourself there probably in a cloudy day. You're hoping for a cloudy day. So the cloudy day in a waterfall, you're gonna have rocks, you're gonna have water, you're gonna have greenery. The cloudy day is gonna give you a lot of that coloring that you want in that type of waterfall shot. The second thing that you want to do is you want to be able to take the shutter on your camera and you wanna drag it as slow as possible. So you could be in a scenario where you're shooting and it could be 200 ISO, you could be shooting at F11, and you want all of that depth of field, and your shutter speed is still gonna be a hundredth of a second, 150th of a second, 45th of a second. You're not gonna get that really, really slow shutter speed, quarter second, half second that you want. So your camera is gonna limit you, even if you went to F22 on a bright day, you're probably still gonna have a hundredth of a second, 125th of a second. That's where things like this are very, very important. So. They are basically neutral density filters. Think of it as almost kind of like sunglasses for the lens. So this happens to be part of the Lee system, right? This is for micro four thirds cameras and things like that. But basically you could either get these things as screw-ons for your camera. You can get them so that they have a kit. There's a Lee big stopper that people use and it slides right on top of the lens. But the system basically just kind of covers the lens. And once you have the lens, your lens now has sunglasses and those glasses are really, really dark. Like you could barely, you can't see my eye through this. Very, very dark. So by rendering the scene that dark, the camera's like, whoa, I need to be able to get a lot of light in here. So what am I gonna do? Drag that shutter, drag that shutter, drag that shutter. And when you do that, the shutters will start getting slower and slower and slower. And that water that's coming down from the waterfall is gonna start looking smoother and smoother and smoother. So in this section, I'm just gonna again just open this up here. You'll see that that water looks very milky coming down this one section, right? I'm shooting at a third of a second at F11. So that's what you wanna be able to do here. Now, obviously my picture here sucks, right? Because you're gonna have a waterfall, I just have a rock. So good luck to you, hope you get a great shot. If you do, make sure that you share it on Facebook tag me with it. I'd love to be able to see what you got. Now, the Peach Bit ebook deal. We have 40% off of this ebook. Make sure that you go to kelby1.com slash, or make sure you go to peachbit.com slash kelby1, enter in the code kelby1, and you're going to get color for designers. So 40% off of this ebook, you can't beat that. Now, a website that I want you to take a look at. Guys, we do this over at Kelby One. We have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but our biggest conference is Photoshop World. Go to Photoshop World. Photoshop World is gonna happen August 11th through the 13th, 2015 at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. 
you're going to love this show. Make sure they take a look at all of the information over at photoshopworld.com. So that's it for this week. My name is RC. Hopefully I'll see you guys here next week on Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care.